Hello and welcome to Okuma, to our turbine machining days. My name is Jochen Ondra. I'm the product specialist for multitasking machines and lace in Okuma Europe. And I introduce today our Maltus U4000. With me is my colleague Burkhard Kraft and Paul Bohn from Open Mind. And we will show something about uh, turbine blade machining. So thank you and also welcome from my side. My name is Paul Bohn. I will welcome you to the turbine days today. I'm working for Open Mind in the Global Engineering Services team. We are a team which is uh, supporting our own colleagues worldwide and also our customers. When I'm thinking about turbine machining parts, um, there are a lot of different parts which we can do. So for example, turbine discs, single blades, impellers, also blisks, and some parts have to be done with additive manufacturing or with adaptive manufacturing. For example, if you have a blade which is precision forged, we need adaptive manufacturing. Today, we have during this show on three different machines, three different kind of parts. And we want to talk about what kind of things do I need from the cut cum system to fulfill the task of the part. So, the first part, the turbine disc, we have to construct the clamping. Then, we have to turn the part. We have to do the milling and drilling. Maybe we will do an in-process probing. Then, for sure, before I will bring the program to the, to the machine, I have to simulate it and, for sure, and C code generation. The second part has the, nearly the same processes, but for this kind of parts, for impellers, they are quite complex and we need quite complex five axis movements. So, therefore, we have special packages for impeller and blisks. For the third part, we don't need turning normally. We also don't need drilling. But we need the single blade applications to fulfill the part. For you as a customer, you need safety, stability and reliability. You need super your surfaces. You need to increase the tool life. You have to reduce the programming and cycle times. So that means it's not important just to reduce the programming and the cycle time is getting higher, we have to reduce both. And you have to handle for sure exotic materials like titanium or inconel. We as Open Mind, we are developing two systems, Hypercut S and Hypermill. Hypercut S is our cut system. So this system is developed for CUM. So it's our cut for CUM system. Then we have different kind of drilling cycles, 2D milling cycles, 3D milling cycles, 5-axis milling cycles. And we have special packages like an impeller, bliss package, blade package and other packages. We also support mill turn and we support new type of manufacturing. So for example, adaptive machining or additive machining. Then we have an automation functionality where we can automate your parts to reduce the programming time. And we are developing a simulation and the verification for it. So, what is your advantage? Open Mind is developing everything by his own. So that means if you buy the CUT system, it's developed by Open Mind. If you buy a CUM system, the CUM system, Hypermill, it's developed by Open Mind. And also the simulation. So everything is developed in house from cut until in seed code generation. For example, if you start to machine with turbine disks, you are machining turbine disks, and a few years later you have to do impellers. You don't have to change your system, you can stay at Open Mind and just add a package. So you know the whole system, you just get a new package. Today, 
I want to talk about the blade tangent milling. It's Max machining for single blades. And therefore, I want to go a step backward. So I want to start at the basis. Everyone knows this rule. Time is money. And currently, a lot of people are looking for to save money at the roughing process. Oh, I can save money at the roughing process, I reduce the cutting time, I reduce the tool costs and so on. And the finishing process, they don't often look to it. But we think we also have to look to the finishing process. Because the finishing process also takes a lot of time on the machine. Especially if I need a high quality surface finishing. But let us first have a look to the well-known finishing processes. So basically we are finishing with a bullnose cutter or a ball mill or a lens cutter. But all of these kind of tools have small problems. That means we can only do small step overs. For the ball mill we cannot increase the tool radius until endless. We are limited so we have small tool radiuses and no cutting speed in the center of the tool. So we always have to lead the tool forward. We will now have a look on the machine and see the finishing with the bullnose cutter. We are using a bullnose cutter from the company Imuge Franken, which has the diameter 8 mm, radius 0 0.8, 7 flutes, cutting speed of 280 meters, and feed rate per tooth is 0.04 and the step over is 0.5. Now we will have a look to the new finishing process. We already have seen the basic finishing process and we will have now a look to the new finishing process. The new finishing process is done with barrel cutters, with conical barrel cutters. You see a picture there with two barrel cutters. It's the same but with different angles on the tool. With a barrel cutter we have a big step over by getting also a high surface quality and we have never a center cut. But what is a barrel cutter? Let us have a look to it. There are three different types of barrel cutters. There are four but one the lens cutter I will remove so we have three different types of barrel cutters the general barrel cutter and there you see the barrel geometry is grinded on the red area where a big circle segment is grinded to the tool then there is the tangential barrel cutter where the circle segment is grinded tangential from the tip to the shank. And we have the conical barrel cutter where the barrel geometry, the big circle segment, is grinded to the conical angle. The conical barrel tool is an innovation tool, innovative tool which is created by Open Mind. And we will have a look why we were thinking about this kind of tool. If we compare the tangential barrel and the conical barrel tool, we will see here no really big difference. This tool has a radius 50. But for some geometries we can increase the radius, for example until 1000. Because of the tangential circle segment, we will get into collision with the tangential barrel cutter. With the conical barrel cutter we will get no collision even with a radius of 1000 mm. Now we will have a look to the roughing of the machine and see afterwards the finishing with the barrel cutter. So you see the finishing of the barrel cutter has already started and we are using a barrel cutter, conical barrel cutter from Imugi Franken, diameter 12 at the shank, radius 250, 
four flutes, cutting speed 111, feed rate per tooth 0 0.045, and a step over of 1.8 millimeters. This is more than three times than the Bullnos end mill. Um, the machine itself, it's a horizontal multitasking lathe. So we have a left turning spindle, which is a big bore spindle in this case with 112 millimeter spindle bore, which means we can operate 100 millimeter bar material inside the machine. Um, the H1 turret, our milling turret, has uh, 12,000 RPM and 25 uh, kilowatt. <coughs> on the right side, we have a sub spindle. So on the Maltas, we can choose sub spindle or tailstock. In this case, we have a special sub spindle where we have the tailstock function as well. So we can choose to use a sub spindle or to use a center in the sub spindle. Also optional, we can have a lower turret. In this case, we have the lower turret. And also here we have an option on the lower turret, which is our steady rest. It's a SMW SLU 3.2 to support long shafts inside of the machine. Um, the Maltus machines are used very flexible. So behind me we have a 80 tools magazine, so we can store a lot of tools. So we have to have some ready to be to have a quick setup for any kind of productions. When we talk about blade machining and uh, five-axis machining, we have a lot of options. So we in Okuma, we are known that we do everything on our own. We have our own controller. We have our own uh, servo drives. We have our own motors, our own encoders. So therefore, we can make a very good package for our customers. And to do five-axis, we start with our high-precision C-axis on the left side. On this C-axis, we have a Okuma encoder with 36 million pulses per revolution. This means we can uh, have a resolution of a 100,000th degree. Um, also here on the H1 turret we have a NCB axis. So the standard axis is 0 0.001 degree indexing. This one is for contouring, so it's a special option for five axis machining. And in the controller itself we have uh, functionalities, our five axis kit which for example has super knobs. So super knobs improves the uh, dynamic accuracy of the machine. Um, also, all of our machines are equipped with thermo-friendly concept. That means uh, we measure the temperature of the environment or in the machine and we compensate the machine to keep highest accuracies, which are around 10 micron over the whole working day. Then we have collision avoidance, also standard in our Maltus machine. So what we see on the screen here, on the, uh, in this window, is not only a simulation, these 3D models are used for uh, collision prevention, for collision avoidance inside the machine. So all components are protected against any kind of collision. We will see now the comparison between the bullnose cutter and the barrel cutter. The bullnose diameter 8 has a step over of 0.5 millimeters and a cutting time of 2.5 to seven minutes. The barrel tool has a diameter of 12 and radius 250, step over 1.8 and cutting time two minutes. So this is a time saving of 19% and the part is very small so 19% is really big finally. But let us have a look to the surface quality. For the bonus, we have an RA from 0.82 and our set of 4.71. Compared with the barrel tool, which has an RA of 0.23 and our set of 1.59. So we have with the barrel tool a lower cutting time and a higher surface quality. 72% better surface quality. For sure, you maybe will say, okay, I don't need an RA of 0.2. Then we can increase the step over to reach, for example, RA of 0.4.
it's depending what you need. And even if you don't mill the whole part with this kind of tool and some, only some areas, you will reduce your cutting time or maybe your finishing time. I will bring this all together. So we have with the barrel tool the possibility to be more efficient to finish this kind of surfaces. We have a much greater step over with the same theoretical scallop height. We are more economical with shorter process times with the barrel cutter or we have with the same process time a better surface quality. With these strategies, the thermal de deformation of the machine elements are reduced because we are more tangential to the part um, instead of on the top. Now let us have a look how to use this technology in Hypermill. So here is my single blade and I will program now the tool path and here are the blade cycles and I'm using the 5-axis blade tangent milling using a conical barrel tool and I will create the conical barrel tool. You don't have to import the geometry with DXF and something like this. You can add the germ you will enter the geometry with parametric values. So you are opening the catalog and see, oh, okay, my tool has a tip diameter of six. My base corner radius is, for example, two. My bell radius is 150. And you see, I can increase to 1,500 without changing the angle of the tool. But for this kind of part, we need 150, 250. And I can add the taper angle. For example, 22 degree. Then I will select the model and the feature for the blade. With this feature, I can program the whole blade, all blade cycles with one feature. So I just have to select the geometry one time. And afterwards, I can use this selection in every blade cycle. And I don't have to type in some values, I'm selecting out of the cut geometry. For example, the main blade surfaces or the leading edge curves, the trailing edge curves and so on. So, during the calculation, I want to show you how to control the inclination of the tool. Because the barrel cutter is looking quite complex, how to get the tool to the part with the correct angle. So, Therefore, we are splitting the area of the tool, the barrel area of the tool with the big radius into one until one, uh, from zero to one. So that means here is zero and here is one. So depending what I'm typing in here, I will use the tool more at the tip or more at the back. So this is how I can control in Hypermill a barrel cutter. The inclination itself, everything is done by the cycle itself. And this works for every cycle which is supporting the barrel cutter. And now we can have a look to the internal simulation. And we see we created already a tool path and we can see how the tool will go around the blade. Thank you for your time. It would be great if we can have a discussion afterwards and have a nice day. Thank you from our side. See you next time.